All right, today we're going to talk about sled dogs. We're going to talk about the different types of sled dogs. There's about, well, four that we're going to talk about today. And how these sled dogs throughout centuries have been bred for specific parts uh, of racing and, and the culture of uh, people in the far north. For centuries, um, up until snow machines or snowmobiles, uh, people up in Canada, northern United States, such as Alaska, Greenland, Siberia, Norway, Finland, they relied on these dog teams for their travel in the wintertime. The sled dogs would pull them over distances of snow and ice. They protected them from danger. They guided them uh, home from different parts of the wilderness. And these dogs would never, ever forget the way. They were strong dogs. Um burly, uh, very protective. Um, now, even though today people use snow machines or snowmobiles to get where they need to go for winter travel, there is this kind of, uh, people are starting to gain interest now a little bit more in sled dogs. So even people from all over climates, uh, different climates, you know that Cindy Abbott, our, our mush musher we keep following, she's from California. Climate has nothing to do with sled dogs. And she uh, races sled dogs. So there, people are starting to rediscover the joy of, of sled dogs, the fascination of, of raising them, breeding them, caring for them, uh, training dog teams, and just running them for the pure of pleasure today. Um, so we're going to go through the different types of sled dogs. Um, we're going to start with the Malamute. And what I want you to do right now is I'm going to give you a little bit of time in the reading section. And I want you to read... The section titled Malamute, um, find a little bit about these dogs, and then um, we'll discuss more about the Malamute. So just right now I want you to read through the Malamute. Uh, Pow, give them, pause this, and give them a little bit of time to, to read uh, on, the, on the Malamute. Okay, so you've read a little bit about the Malamute, and... When when you're watching TV or when you specifically think about a sled dog, most people kind of, pre, you know, assume that it's uh, like a Siberian Husky or the Malamute type dog. Both of those breeds are registered with the AKC and both have these s s features um, that come from wolf ancestry. So let's start with the Malamute. You read a little bit about a Malamute and... Uh, Malamutes uh, typically are good dogs for hauling um, heavy loads. Okay, so they're good for ha hauling heavy loads. So you've got to think about where they'd be going, what they'd be hauling, all right? What would be people be needing to haul that would be heavy um back when they used them for travel, and today when they use them for just pure pleasure. Think about the types of things. I want you to think about those things, what they would be taking. They call these type of dogs freight dogs. Right, so these freight dogs, they have specific features that make them in this, this kind of class known as the freight dogs. So the Malamute has a really broad chest. So if anyone, I mean, peep, you you could get a Malamute around here as a pet. I think Mrs. Munson's son might have a Malamute. Might have to ask her about that. Um, they have a very broad chest. I got a picture that's going to pop up here in a minute about kind of, you can tell. They have very, very thick coats. Okay, think about why they would want a thick coat if they're living up in the northern part of Alaska and they're hauling heavy loads and they're constantly outside. They're going to need this very thick coat. They have tough feet. Okay, so they're going to be running thousands and thousands of miles over the course of, you know, a couple weeks, and they need to have tough, sturdy feet to be able to go through this. All right, dogs around here, um, when they're out in the wintertime and getting in the salt that's on the ground that people spread around for the ice, their, their pads on their paws start to kind of um, almost turn raw. And these dogs, they're used to it. They have tougher feet, so they're used to that type of to type of terrain. So they can be out and withstand that cold weather on their feet. 
And again, going in with the cold, they're able to survive in extreme cold. All right. Um, the weight of these guys, um, they're between, they're your bigger dog, so they're going to be a lot more heavy, but they'll be between 80 and 120 pounds. If you want to get that down, I think I have that maybe for some of the others, but if you want to get this down, they're between 100, 120 pounds would be about the max and 80 pounds for the least. Um, they're not super fast. And that's okay. They're not bred to be very fast. The, the speed is no value to a Malamute. Um, pulling is their their big skill. That is what they do. Um, they'll eat almost anything. Like I said, they will survive in extreme cold temperatures and can pull under any type of conditions. So this type of dog would be good in long expeditions. Okay, there are people that will go on an expedition across the Arctic Circle, and that is something that makes them very good for this is because they can survive in that extreme cold. All right, so um, there's a section next on Siberian Huskies that I want you to read through. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time, have Pow, Pow make sure you give him a little bit of time. It's not very long, but give a little bit of time to read on Siberian Huskies. All right, Siberian Huskies. These, I love the Siberian Huskies. They are a beautiful, beautiful dog. Um, they're a smaller breed, and if you look from a Malamute to a Siberian, um, much, much smaller. You'll, you'll be able to tell the size difference when we take a look at one of these pictures. But they're a smaller breed, and um, something that sets them off um, from a lot of the different type of Huskies is their eyes and their eye color and their facial features, but they have blue eyes, okay? Sometimes you'll get a lot that'll even have one brown eye, one blue eye, couple, all right, sometimes just two blue eyes, but blue eyes is a big feature that you'll notice a lot in Siberian Huskies. Um, now, here's a, a little bit about the Siberian Husky. They're not as big as the Malamute, but take a look here. They can pull more than a Malamute, all right, you read that they can pull more than a Malamute, but what's the difference between how much they can pull and how much a Malamute can pull? All right, the difference is, hopefully you got this, is Siberian Huskies can pull more than a Malamute, but for a shorter period of time. Okay, that's the key difference there is, yes, Siberian Huskies can pull more than a Malamute, but for a shorter period of time. If you're going to put them next to each other and say, okay, let's pull the same amount, the Husky is going to be able to pull a lot more. The Husky is going to be, or the Siberian Husky is going to be able to pull a lot more, but, but the Malamute is going to be able to go a lot farther. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the weight. We said that a Malamute weighs between 80 and 120 pounds. A Siberian Husky is going to be a lot smaller, weighing between 40 and 60 pounds. Um, if this helps you anything, uh, figuring out weight, Dixon weighs about 80 pounds. So these dogs are going to be smaller looking than what Dixon would look like. And the Siberian Husky, the reason they're bred, um, they're pretty much traditionally bred because of their appearance. They are a beautiful dog. You can see I love this picture, the beautiful blue eyes just staring right back at you. But they're be they're bred for um, appearance. People will use a Siberian Husky in um, the Iditarod. They will be raced. Um, they're not going to win. Okay, So there are people that use teams of Siberian Huskies, but they know definitely it, it's not um, a type of dog that's going to be out for uh, winning the race. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to read through the Eskimo dogs and find out a little bit more about them. We'll see the difference between the Siberians, the Malamutes, and these now. Next one up is the Eskimo dog. So, Pal, give them a little bit of time to read about the Eskimo dog. Okay, when you think of Eskimos, typically you're always thinking about uh, people in the far north. Well, Eskimo dogs originated in the far north. They specifically originated from the country of Greenland. Okay. Something about these are they are very well insulated. Um, similar to the Malamute, though, is they are 
uh, a lot. They're not a fast dog. The Malamute was not bred for speed, still isn't bred for speed. The Eskimo dog is much slower, uh, very, very slow type of a dog. So they're, again, this would be a dog that would not be used for speed. And this is similar to the Siberia, or to the Malamute too. These are both very similar. Is these guys are used for the long expeditions. Okay, so you could use these on the Iditarod, same with the Malamute, but you're probably not going to be as fast. You're going to want to go on longer expeditions with them because they're going to be able to make that with their insulation, their feet, um, and the amount that they can pull, but they're not fast. All right, the last one we're going to talk about is the dog that is bred for sled dog racing, um, especially in the Iditarod. Um, so we'll take a look at this next one, take a little bit of time and read about uh, the Alaskan Husky. Okay, the Alaskan Husky, it's a mixed breed. It's not a type of dog that's going to be registered or uh, recognized by the AKC, uh, like the other ones are, Malamute, uh, Siberian Husky, Eskimo dogs, those are registered by the, or recognized by the AKC. The Alaskan Husky is not, um, because it is just a mix of a bunch of assortments. They call it, uh, when I was up there and, you know, I asked them about it, they just basically call it a, a, kind of like an Alaskan mutt. It's a mix, it's a cross between uh, the Siberian Husky and a ton of other different breeds, just tons. Um, they'll mix, even, they'll throw greyhounds into the mix, um, for speed. Um, they throw different types of dogs into the mix for whatever type that you, however you're wanting to breed it. Irish setters, German short hair pointers, labs, different hounds and terriers, they're all thrown into the mix just based upon what you're trying to get out of the dog. And they try to perfect it, they're trying to perfect it for their, um, what they're working on. And this dog is most common in the racing circuit. So people, racing dogs, are going to be breeding these, uh, what they call Alaskan Huskies that are kind of a mutt, if you will. Okay, they're similar in size uh, to a Siberian Husky. They look so small. When I first went up to see some of these dogs, and I'll show you some pictures of them, they just, they look so little. that I, I couldn't imagine them pulling uh, hundreds of pounds for thousands of miles. They weigh about the same as the Siberian Husky, 40 to 75 pounds. They look very skinny, but that's the size that they're supposed to be. And um, sometimes you'll call these guys, um, other than the Alaskan Husky, some people will call them an Indian uh, dog, um, just because most of them are coming from and bred in, in different Indian villages throughout Alaska and even Canada. All right. So um, they're very, like I said, very small looking. They are used, um, they're bred for pulling, okay? Here's a couple dogs, uh, the one up in the top right, sitting on the top of the doghouse, his name was Charlie. I really liked that dog a lot. He had an uh, interesting personality. And then I can't remember the name of that dog down on the, <laughs> laying on the ground, but um, the, you can tell they're not big. They, you know, the one that's laying on the, the dog house it's really doesn't even almost look like a husky because his ears, the way his ears are at that point, uh, the one on the ground more looks more huskyish than the other. But these guys are bred for pulling. All right, and a lot of them will use it. Their colors are completely, you know, it just depends. You can see the guy on the ground there. He's more of a reddish brown and white mix. Um, this guy up on the dog house is, you know, black and brown. It just depends what they're mixed with, but they have an assortment of colors. Um, eyes are assortment of colors too, sometimes black, sometimes you'll get some blue ones in there. Um, but uh, you can see they all have a little bit of that wolf in them. Okay, so I want to take a look and talk about uh, what these guys are bred for, what we're looking at. So sled dogs, are they're bred specifically for certain things. Because, um, again, they're a working dog. They're, they're for a specific purpose, and you need to have your working dog being able to do certain things. So sled dogs are bred specifically. One of the things they're built for is strength. Well, think about why they would need strength. All right, think about why are you going to need strength. Well, it's obvious. You're having to pull hundreds, maybe thousands of pounds over long distance of time. So strength is big time. 
bred for speed, okay? Those Malamutes, those Alaska, uh, Eskimo dogs, they are not bred for speed. They're slower, so you want to get these these Alaskan Huskies, the sled dogs, you want to get a quick type of a dog in there so that they can be fast because if you're on the racing circuit, you want to be fast if you're wanting to win. Endurance, to be able to go over long periods of time, uh, pulling all of that and you know keeping on focus and being on focus also kind of goes along with the intelligence of a dog. You need a smart dog. We've done some different tests in different classes on the intelligence of dogs, and we'll talk more about that, why you would want an intelligent dog and your team of dogs. Going with intelligence is a dog that's going to follow orders, an obedient type of dog. Okay, this is another reason we're doing some of those tests. Can your do- Is your dog obedient? Is it hard to get your dog to be obedient? Do you want a dog that's not obedient in a team trying to pull you thousands of miles? And then obviously the joy of pulling, the desire to want to do this. Okay, they love it. Right now in this picture here, they stopped, took a break to give the dogs water because it uh, it was warm in the summer and you need to stop them often to to hydrate them. And these dogs were just going crazy because they wanted to continue to go. You can see they're just barking and barking. And they just wanted to go, 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 go. Okay, they love to do what they do. No one's forcing them to do it. They love it. So the desire to pull is another reason that they are bred. Okay, let's take a look at the last section of reading on fur. Just read through there about um, fur. And let's, you know, as you're reading, think about the function of fur. We have dogs, you know, most of us, there's not a lot of people around here that have huskies, but people do. But think about some of the dogs we have. Would it be wise for them to be doing this type of a race? Okay, think about the benefits of fur as you're reading. So I'll give them a little bit of time to read about fur. Okay, so you finished reading fur. Get that next page. Whoops, wrong way. Fur. Well, the amount of fur, obviously, determines the function of the dog. All right. Um, We talked about a freight dog, and when the Malamute is a freight dog, or dogs that are just bred for eggs, Uh, expedition dogs Um, well those types of dogs are required to spend long 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 hours in negative temperatures so obviously a dog with a heavier coat is going to be out in um, longer type of races or even just long expeditions maybe not necessarily races but long marathon type races or just for expeditions because you have to be outside for long periods of time okay Complete opposite, a very light coat, would be a dog that is going to be more into the sprint type races. They have really short races that might last one to two days. And um, so they do real quick short races, um, fewer than two hours at any given time. Okay, And your medium coat, obviously, would be um, for uh, your middle distance uh, runners. Hmm. It's kind of in between that sprint and longer races. Okay. So that's what you've got on fur. Now, uh, Kyle's going to be giving you a writing assignment on uh, dog breeding. I believe that's today. So uh, go ahead and work on that. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about sled dogs again, but a little bit more. um, Not the type of dog, but um, into dominant, submissive, and, and some different words that they'll be using. So enjoy. Bye.